case dovetails all cut and fit, it's time to move on to the rest of the joinery for the cases. Um, so what I'm going to be doing now, there are three different types of additional joinery that these cases are going to get. The center case is going to have a groove plowed along the back edge to accept the back of the cabinet. And this groove is going to be inset several inches so that there's actually a space at the back of the cabinet where, um, you know, uh, plugs and receptacles and things can sort of nestle in and um, not get crushed by the back of the cabinet. The center cabinet is also going to have a dado running down the center of the top and bottom to receive a vertical center divider that's going to divide the cabinet in two. And then finally the side cabinets are going to have a rabbit in the back to accept their backs. Now, all of these joints are going to be made using joinery planes. So let's take a second and look at the planes that we're going to be using to cut these joints. So the first of the joinery planes is the plow plane. We're going to use this for plowing grooves. Now, the plow plane has a skate rather than a sole because these typically came with a set of irons that ranged from an eighth of an inch wide up to uh, 9 sixteenths or 5 eighths of an inch wide. Um, usually you end up finding them just with one iron left in them. It's usually the quarter inch and that's okay because the quarter inch is usually the most used of the irons. Um, in addition to the skate, um, there's a, a movable fence. This one is secured with wedges. There are some that are secured with um, screws. There are different types of mechanisms for securing the arms of the fence. And the fence is to set the distance of the cutter away from the edge of the board that you're scribing. And there's also typically a depth stop. Now this one has a very old style depth stop that's just made out of wood with a wooden thumb screw here. Um, you will frequently in more common um, and more recent plow planes see um, brass or steel depth stops. The second plane I want to talk about, second of the joinery planes that we're going to use, is the dado plane. Uh, this one is very similar to the plow plane in that it's meant for plowing a groove or a, a dado, but a dado is for is, is a cross grain groove. So while a groove would be considered a long grain this way, a dado would be a groove across the grain of the wood. This plane is a little bit different than the plow in that one, the iron is skewed. That means it's, it's not straight across the sole of the plane. It's actually at an angle. What this does is it helps to sever the fibers, cross grain fibers more easily. It also has a scoring iron in the front. Um, these two little nicking knickers on the side here score the sides of the dado before the trailing iron shears away the wood fibers. Now these, planes come in single widths, not like the plow that would come with a set of irons. So when you look for dado planes, you need to look for one in the size dado that you need. These also have depth stops. Sometimes they're fitted on the outside of the stock. Sometimes they're mortised into the stock. And the thumb screw at the top adjusts the depth of the dado. Finally, there are a couple of different kinds of rabbit planes. So this first one looks sort of similar to the dado plane. Um, this is a fenced rabbit plane, otherwise known as a moving philister plane. Um, again, it has a skewed iron on the bottom. This one has a fence secured with screws. You can also find them with fences that are similar to the plow plane. It also has an iron here for, again, um, this is for cross grain work, for scoring the fibers. These planes are designed for use along the grain as well as across the grain. So the skewed iron really helps across grain as well as the scoring iron which scores the shoulder of the rabbit for cross grain work. And again it has a depth stop. In addition to the moving philister or fenced rabbit plane, we have unfenced rabbit planes. 
Now again, this one is skewed. These also come in square mouth, although the square versions, square mouth versions are typically a little bit more difficult to find. These I don't typically use for sinking rabbits. Um, if you look in Peter Nicholson's Mechanics Companion, he does note that the moving filister would have been used for sinking a rabbit and the unfenced rabbit plane would be used for adjusting and smoothing the bottom and sides of the rabbit to your scribe lines, to your marking gauge lines. You can use these for sinking a rabbit as well, but you need to use your fingers as a fence to guide the depth of the rabbit. So let's start by using the plow plane to plow the groove. So my board is secured, my panel is secured to my bench top with my hold fasts. I'm planing into the planing stop. Um, and I have the crochet set below the top of the bench so that it doesn't interfere with the fence of the plane. So that allows me to fully support the board and not have to hang the panel over the side of the bench top. Now, one of the tricks to using a plow plane is getting it started. Um, the, the great thing about joinery planes is that they don't have to be set up to take a super fine, super smooth cut. You're cutting joinery, you're not cutting a show surface here. So if the bottom of the groove is a little bit rough, it's no big deal. That's not going to be seen in the finished piece. The idea with joinery planes is you're looking to make these joints quickly and efficiently, um, not spend all day doing it. So this plane is set for a fairly rank cut. One of the easiest ways to get these started is to actually start at the end of the cut. So I'll start by making a couple passes just here at the edge. And you'll see I'm actually planing against the grain here. That's one of the drawbacks of the joinery planes is really you don't have left and right handed versions. Um, you're going to end up planing against the grain probably 50% of the time. So you start at the end and gradually extend that cut as you deepen it. until you're making a full length pass. Now notice one thing here is that I've laid this out so that my groove is gonna fall inside a socket here and through the edge of the, the tail. Um, by having the groove fall inside a socket in a, in a half blind, this groove will be covered up by the lap of the dovetail so you won't see it in the finished piece. So we can go ahead now and continue plowing this groove. My left hand is holding the fence against the side. I'm not pushing forward with this hand. It's merely holding the fence against the side of the stock to keep everything controlled and keep this plane vertical. My right hand is doing all the pushing. Now, another thing you can do with these planes is use them sort of choppy, unlike a, a smooth plane or a joiner. So by doing this, I'm focusing down at the end, finishing the cut down here, and then I can just gradually work my way back. And this works really well for longer boards, like the top and bottom of the case. With the depth stop, once I get to the bottom of the cut, the plane simply stops cutting. And I know I'm done. Okay, so let's move on to the rabbit. Now, as I mentioned before, I'm going to sink the rabbit or make the initial cuts with the moving filister plane. And this is because it has a fence that I can set to make the rabbit the width or depth that I want. And it has a depth stop, so I can set it for uh, the bottom of the cut. Then I'll come back and I will clean it up with the unfenced rabbit. So here's the top board for my one of my side uh, cases. You can see there's a couple knots here, so it's probably going to be a little difficult down this end with a little bit of tough grain, but uh, the skewed iron should help get through that. Um, similar to the plow plane, it can help to start at the end, but you don't have to. Okay. 
And once again, you can see I'm not really taking super fine shavings here. I'm trying to peel away this wood and get this joint cut as quickly and efficiently as possible. Now it can help with a rabbit plane to start the cut by leaning it slightly so only the corner is cutting. And you might be able to see on the camera here that this rabbit is slightly angled um, the, with the corner deeper than the outside edge. That's okay to start the cut and that actually can help you to start the cut because oftentimes with a rabbit plane the tendency is to push down harder on the outside edge causing the outside of the rabbit to tip down. So I like to start with a slight angle upward and then adjust it later as I get close to final depth to keep the rabbit square. Okay, and just like before, once the depth stop bottoms out, the plane will stop cutting and you know you've got it plane to depth. Now if you need to, you can come back with your unfenced rabbit and square this up. And with the unfenced planes, if need be, you can also ride them on their side on the rabbit to clean up the shoulder line. And our rabbit's done. Now the dado plane is slightly different because it doesn't have a fence of its own. This is because you're typically using the dado plane in the middle of a board somewhere, not along its edge, like you would for a plow plane or a rabbit plane. What that means is we have to find some other way to guide this plane because you're not going to be able to just guide it freehand. So we have to attach a fence to our workpiece rather than having a fence attached to the plane. So you can see here, I've simply used a hold fast and an F clamp to attach a board that I've planed straight to the edge where that dado is going to ride. Now there's a knife line scribed right along that straight edge. I don't know that you can see it on the camera, but I measured where I wanted my dado before I attached this fence and I used a framing square and my striking knife to knife a line where the side of that dado is going to be. This is going to be a three quarter inch dado, so the dado plane is going to come out to here and make a three quarter inch wide dado. Um, you can also use nails to temporarily attach this fence. Very common um, in period pieces to find small holes underneath a dado on the inside of a case where a temporary fence was uh, temporarily attached with nails. Uh, but since this is a more contemporary piece and um, this top is going to be very visible, um, I decided to go with clamping it instead of nailing it on. Now, one of the things with the dado plane is because we're planing a cross grain, we need to define the outside edges of that dado with the scribing iron first. So you would need to do the same thing if you were working a cross grain with the rabbit plane. So we're going to start this plane by dragging it backwards and dragging this scoring iron, holding the fence tightly, holding the plane tightly to the fence, and I'm just going to drag the plane backwards. And what you're going to see is that scoring iron is going to define the width of that dado for me. So now you should be able to see I have a nice knifed edge for the width of that dado. And I'll usually make two or three light passes so that I'm sure I've got that dado well defined. And then again, I'm going to start at the far end, short strokes working my way back. And it's important here to use this hand to keep that plane up against the fence. You'll see I rocked a little bit um, and that caused some 
scratching and scraping over here. That's okay because that's on the inside of the joint and I'm gonna cut that out with subsequent passes. But if I would have done it on the outside here, that's gonna show later on. So, helps to take your time. And again, similar to the other two planes, this plane's set up to take a fairly thick cut. We're not looking for a smooth plane type surface here. We're looking to get rid of this material as quickly as possible. Just like before, once the depth stop bottoms out on the top of the board, the plane will stop cutting. Now, if you're used to making dados with a router or a table saw, you may find the process using a, uh, a dado plane a little bit backwards. Because in this case, we don't make the, jo the joint to fit the panel that's going to go in the joint. Instead, we make the panel to fit the joint. So it's important in the case of a dado, and it, for most joinery when cutting it with planes, to cut the joint first. Unlike with a table saw or a router where you may make your panel first, and then cut the joint. This panel I made in planed over size because I know I'm going to have to fit the panel to the joint later on. The dado plane that I use cuts a three quarter inch dado. So I need this panel to be three quarters of an inch. When I plane, when I plane it up, um, I will plane the panel to fit the joint. As you can see right now, the panel's a little bit wide for the joint. By probably 10 or 15 passes with a plane. So what I'll do is I'll take a smoothing plane to the center divider and plane it until it fits this dado. And the nice thing about using a dado plane um, and planing the panel like this is I don't need to plane the entire panel to fit the joint. All I have to do is focus my effort on the edge that's going to go into the joint and I can just plane this panel until it fits right in that dado. So that's about it. We're about ready to go ahead and glue this case up. Um, I hope you found this episode informative and got an idea for the power of the joinery plane. Um, as you can see, they're really fast to use. And I mean, in the time that it would have taken just to set up a router really for one of these cuts, uh, I was able to go ahead, knock my boards down and cut three different kinds of joints. So, um, you know, they can be very quick for if you're cutting just a few joints. Um, so I hope this will encourage you to give these planes a try. I think you'll find they're a lot of fun. Thanks for watching.